Fight through to Gladwell for Sail World. Here with Peter Burling and Blair Chuk, just ahead of them leading from Weymouth to do the Pre-Olympics. Peter, you've been uh, one of the products of a, what's known as the Tauranga Sailing Factory. What have you sort of really done to get this far and be the youngest crew ever sailed in the Olympics? Um, well, we started off with the uh, kind of standard youth path, I suppose, like started sailing Aussies and internationals a few times. I uh, grew quite early, so ended up going up fast quite quickly. I think I got out of the Aussie at about 13. And then um, yeah, jumped in the D, sailing, and then ended up in a 420. a couple of times, and it was going pretty well, and then moved up on a 470, and yeah, just went from there. What was your background, Blair? Uh, a little bit different to uh, Peter's, actually. I started sailing, I grew up around the water since I uh, was on the water, back in the day, but I only started racing when I was about 12, uh, keep racing for Kiri Kiri, um, high school, and um, did pretty well for that, so I did the team for about three or four years. And then I started sailing with Splash, and then I did that for three years, went to Worlds once, and then I moved into the 420, 29er, and yeah, now onto the 49er this year. So, what crewing had you done before you got into the 49er? Um, I crewed when I was sailing the 420 after the Splash and the Kiri Kiri Cross 49ers um, for a couple of years, and then went to New Zealand and sailed some other countries after that, and then one year in Hawaii. So. You were, what, 17 when you sailed in the Olympics, Peter. How did you find the transition from being a skipper back to, on the, sorry, being a crew back to being a skipper? Um, well, I suppose I'd always skipper before that. I just only started crewing in the 420, really, because I got too big to steer the boat. So I'd only, I probably crewed for three years or maybe even more. And, um, yeah, I was just doing a lot of gun control and just doing big jokes and things like that. So, yeah, it was just before getting used to actually sailing as a skip running across the boat and all the other things that kind of make skip sailing easy, so it was just more of a challenge than steering. So looking ahead to Weymouth uh, with the pre-Olympics coming up, what do you think you're sort of going to do there that was sort of different from what you did in the Scandia sail for golf? Um, we've got a few more bits of good gear to put up and our campaign build up and things like that, so this event's going to obviously be a lot more capable of taking so, yeah, we just don't think we're that far off in the Scandia Regatta. We've got a few little things that didn't quite happen as we thought they would. So. How about you, Blair? I mean, how do you sort of see things going? Are you still, guys still on a learning curve? Or? Yeah, for sure. I mean, the learning curve has been sailing for two and a half years, so it was pretty steep for the first uh, two years. You know, every time we were sailing, we were sort of making improvements to something. Um, you know, now we're sort of towards the top end of the fleet. Uh, sort of flattened off a little bit probably but you know each small step you know another big big improvement for us now so yeah we're still still learning every day and you know, we'll see if we're, if we're on track so you had a stint in the uh, foiling moth this, earlier this year Peter how did that sort of go and how does that work into the 49er sailing um yeah well, I did the worlds at the beginning of the year and a fair bit of training in it I suppose had a lot of fun in that kind of it's one of the few boats where things actually happen quicker than the 49er. So it's quite good for the kind of decision making and reaction times and just being able to do things quite quickly and without anything. Yeah, it's just sort of enjoyed it and learned a lot. What's the transition like from a 49er to the foiling moth? Um, I suppose they're quite similar. It's just how they both go kind of fast and ways you have to steer away and things like that, it's all kind of work out, but then, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be a lot different packing and things like that, where you're just hiking at better speed and things. So how long did it take you to get into the foiling moth to the point where you could sort of turn on a reasonable performance in the world? Um, well, I probably started sailing them at the beginning of last year. Just off and on, my dad had brought one in for the assassin sharing them, been sailing on a bit, and then um, bought a Mac 2 and kind of did a bit of training in that. I think I managed to pick up the uh, jiving and tacking and boat handling pretty quickly from what I'd done in other boats. But yeah, it probably took me a few months more of training before I was able to tack. So just 
sort of looking back on your careers now, I mean, if you were coming through the ranks again, what would you be telling young kids to do that are you know, probably 12 and starting optimists and wondering what they should do, Peter? Oh, I'm sort of check training hard and try and learn and understand about what makes the boat actually go fast and be aware of all the things you're doing. That would be the main thing. And how about you, Blair? Because you, you came up through a slightly different route. What would you tell them to do? So after Weymouth, I mean, what happens next? You've got Perth in, in December, and assuming you can qualify there, what's the sort of game plan going through the Olympics? Um, well, we'll see. Yeah, Perth is going to be a big event for us in the world. If we put the good result there, it'll definitely make it easy for us to make it. And um, yeah, we've obviously got a few build-up regattas before we get the same one. Okay, well, thanks very much. And all the best.